The Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. They are going to talk to us about the Dental Army. It's just a wonderful thing they do. Well, well, that's Ren's name, the Dental Army. What we're actually going to talk about is the Medical and Dental Mobile Unit Foundation. And, uh, and one of the things that attracted me to Nita in the first place was her wonderful smile. And as one of uh, the, our fellow expats pointed out, our presentation is all about smiles. So it kind of connects right to what um, Ron talked about. So anyway, um, recently we had the uh, luck. Let's see. Did he turn this on? No, no. Let's see. Okay, why isn't this going forward? <laughs> this is going to be a quick show. Did he turn it off by any chance? Oh, yeah, he could have turned it off his light bulb. Yeah, there we go. Try that. There we go. That's, that's for what he's yep. Okay, so anyway, this is, we're going to talk about this foundation. My wife, Nita, I'm a, not a dentist, I'm not a medical professional, um, I'm a retired uh, teacher librarian. My wife, Nita, was a dental nurse for 30 years here in Thailand in various hospitals, and she's retired now, but she, had, um, she still is involved with this dental foundation out of Bangkok. And what this is, is a group of um, about 200 people um, that that go around the country and they do free dental clinics, free dental and medical clinics, four times a year. So it was founded in 2006, and the goal is to you know, alleviate the pain and suffering of poor people. They have 200 dedicated members, uh, and their shared belief is health and hygiene are essential to people's well-being and also smiles. And so they provide general medical, uh, medical and dental care. And their target areas are rural communities that are usually poor, um, and they provide um, t treatment by government and non-government organizations. Um, the recent one that we're involved in was partially sponsored by the local um, Rotary Group, so they help with um, paying for the, the project and, and doing a lot of the logistics for it. So number of patients they usually see in a one-day procedure, or op they call it an operation, are uh, medical care and services, 300 to 500 patients, dental care, 500 to 1,000. Um, they do it every, th every three months or four times annually, and it's a full day of treatment starting from 8 o'clock in the morning until 5. And they do some general medicine uh, treatments like dermatology, ophthalmology, pediatrics. They do a lot of dental stuff like um, you know, diagnosis, uh, prophylaxis, um, fluoride gel, cleaning and scaling, extraction, tooth filling, um, also do dentures um, sometimes, and then give out, um, give out dental hygiene products, and then help people understand how to take care of their, their teeth. So basically what happens with their trips is that there's some pre-planning that goes into it. They have a survey where they go, they find a place that they want to serve, they go there, um, then they, they have a second day where there's a treatment. Now if they're doing things like dentures, there might be some extra times in between where they're taking impressions and giving fittings and things like that. Um, and then they set everything up, they bring trucks from Bangkok with all of the, with everything for a full dental clinic. Um, and medical and dental equipment and all of the, all of the you know, machinery that goes along with that, air, you know, uh, um, compressors and suction and everything else, um, and then and medicine. And so on the treatment day, there's nine departments there. There's a medical department, a dental department, medicine, sterilizing. So there's people that are doing work on the, on the side, making sure that you know, everybody has sterilized equipment to use, because they go through a lot of equipment in one day. Um, and then the final activity, like everything here in Thailand, there's a making merit with monks, and then um, they send appreciation. There's also usually a dinner at the end, uh, end of the busy day. So um, impact, you might have noticed this number before, that's how many people, um, this was as of um, a few months ago, 
um, total number of medical and dental patients since their establishment 17 years ago, so 70,000. Um, 20, 28,000 dental patients, 35,000 medical, um, medical patients, and then 6, 000, almost 5,500 5 denture patients. And these are all the places that they've been doing clinics in Thailand. So you can see it's just about every, everywhere. Um, where we were was way up in the north. It's right on the border. This was just last January, January 20th. Um, it's the second one of the dental clinics that I've been involved with. Nita has been to them many times. Um, it's a, a place called Phong, which is right on the border of Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai provinces. Um, and uh, it was held in a, uh, in a uh, Chinese temple center. So they have a social center there that's quite a big building. And um, it was sponsored by, by the Rotary in part. I did some, uh, some Google translation on those. So at that, if you can't read Thai, that previous slide, it's the Fong Rotary Club. And the types of dental services, just kind of what I already talked about, doing fillings, doing extractions, doing scaling or cleaning, um, and also other, um, other you know, education about, about dentistry. Many of the patients were, were children. So the night before they go there, I think even two days, they, it takes a lot of work to set everything up because they have to put out pipes for um, suction and pipes for, um, for pressure for the, um, for the machines and electricity and they have lights and there's about 40 dental stations that are set up and every, you know, they have a collapsible chair and portable lights and everything. So it looks just like the dental chair that you might see at, when, on your dental visit, but it doesn't have any kind of uh, you know, mechanical uh, uh, you know, adjustments and things like that. So they spend a lot of time setting everything up. This is the welcome to the, um, to the, um, to the, the meeting. And it, it, this also, this previous slide, it kind of shows some of the other organizations that were involved, like the Rotary and, um, and Thai Public Health and I think Bangkok Bank and other places like that. So a lot of the, the beginning is getting everything set up, getting equipment set up, um, making sure there's equipment in all the stations. These are the suction machines that suck up all the, all the, the water and everything that's used. Um, these are pipes going out and, and clean water also. They bring all sorts of packages of dental equipment um, and also, you know, all sorts of supplies. Very, very well organized. It all comes in boxes and gets packed up again at the end in boxes. Um, these are the suction machines again. Um, and then eyeglasses ready because one of the things they do is give out eyeglasses. Um, these, are, these are the machines for the air pressure um, and some of the pipes there. And then here's just the setup as we're waiting for the day to start. So we get there at like 7.30 or so. The equipment's all set up. People spend a little bit of time um, going over their individual stations and you know, they had a breakfast for us. They also provided a lunch, uh, a lunch and a dinner at the end of the day. So um, these are all the equipment. This is, they bring all their own electrical equipment, so they hook into the grid um, that's provided. And, um, and you know, they bring all the cables and everything. It's pretty amazing. Um, and then, um, so we also had to set up chairs in this great big space. And here's some of the dental stations. You can see 32, there, I think there were 40 something dental stations. Getting all of the tools ready. Um, for the day, and then also um, providing water because they also provided food uh, during the day, um, not only for the workers but for the the patients who came. So you know, and everything was completely free for the patients. Um, and this was the morning, getting a little bit of a snack in the morning, um, and then um, they also brought sterilizing equipment like like these autoclaves to sterilize the tools. Um, and also um, medicine, and also to dental supplies too. So they come completely, fully um, functioning with everything that they need to run the clinic during the day. Um, machines for making the, the filling material, um, tools, and then also equipment that sterilizes all the tools, all the pipes that run around. This is a machine that lubricates um, dental drills um, and face masks for, for everybody. Uh, and so now we're getting ready for the, the day to start, and um, there's one of, the, one of the dental nurses that uh, spent the day doing scaling or cleaning, that's my wife, Nita. Um, and then we had a group photo, of course, you always have to have a group photo of everybody. 
Um, and then the day starts off by patients who come, who walk in, um, they don't have to pre-register or anything, unless they're getting dentures. They would have had to have a couple of visits before that. They're given a ticket, um, and then they go up, and the first thing they do is get their blood pressure taken, because you know certain procedures like extractions and things like that can't really be done with patients that have um, too high blood pressure. They'd be referred to some place to, to get treatment some other place. Um, and then after that, they register for the, the dentistry, and they're given a piece of paper. It marks down what they're going to do. Maybe they'll just go for a medical treatment. Maybe they'll go um, and do the pre-screening for the, the dental treatment. Um, so after they get up, they go over, and then this nice gentleman who doesn't speak Thai was there to help them um, go w tell them where to sit and uh, keep them kind of in line. Uh, also to redirect them to go and get their blood pressure taken or get that piece of paper, um, you know, if they hadn't done that. So, um, so that was my job, and you know, it was a little bit cold in the morning. So um, there were lots of children that came, some with their parents and and um, some with their older siblings, um, waiting in line, and they're all waiting in line for. Um, for the first, for the number one thing. We also had a lot of monks that came this time, young men that are monks, and my wife Nita said that in this area, it's a kind of a poor area, so many of the families send their children, their sons off to, to study at, the, at a monastery, um, and so they, they brought about 150 young, you know, young men, I would say 150 or so, who came in and got their treatment. Uh, so I don't think they were voluntarily there, I think they were brought by the, by the monastery. But they kind of put them in their in their own in their own little area, so and and you know people people were generally happy about being there. I would say so. At, po at some points, we had a lot of people in line waiting for the the number one station. We had a visit by some of the uh, big wigs, I think, from the Red Cross and and you know also from the Rotary and the local government. You know, photo opportunities you always have to th have those. So the number one station for dental treatment is um, is the screening test. And at the screening test, there's a couple of dentists, and what they do is they, um, they do a very brief examination, maybe 30 seconds or so, and they decide whether somebody needs to go for extraction, just for cleaning, or if they need to get a filling, and then they, um, and then they send them on their way. If there's a parent there, they, they talk with the parent about the, the child's treatment. Um, and that's a very quick process. Um, they stamp all of the pieces of paper with treatment, and they tell them where to go, what station to go to next. Um, and there's uh, people waiting, and and some of the, some of the patients that were um, that were that were treated. Um, you can see that little guy's not not too happy. Most of the kids seem to be pretty taking it pretty well, I would say. Um, you know, th there's talking talking to the parent about it. Obviously, at that initial station, they had a lot of sterilized tools because they'd go through a tool, you know, a mirror and a and a uh, a little pick. I don't know what you call it. Every uh, every 30 seconds or so. <laughs> and this little girl, I thought she had a funny a funny shirt, but she was very calm and she was like, okay, I think it's that one right there. Um, but I thought that was funny with the peanuts. And this little girl also looked very uh, very calm. You know, and I thought it was funny. She didn't seem to be nervous at all about having a dentist poking around. So the number two station after the initial screening um, is the tooth filling. So um, tooth filling, they're, um, they're going, they're, you know, doing a regular filling. Now all of the stations have a dentist and they also have an assistant with the dentist. Um, my wife Nita is a, is a dental nurse, so she's able to do scaling and, and things like that, but she would also have an assistant working with her. So at any time, there were about 100 people actually doing, doing treatments, I would say, on the floor, and then a certain number of people also doing backup work, like sterilizing equipment and that sort of thing. So these are all the, um, the, um, the dental fillings. And this is, it's kind of hard to see in here, but that's a little kid with a Spider-Man outfit. And he was, an, he was an unwilling patient. So it took about four people to hold Spider-Man down. Um, but, um, but also the monks were in there. And, uh, and you know, everybody seemed to be pretty happy, even though going to the dentist is not necessarily everybody's favorite sort of uh, activity. And then number three is extraction. Don't worry, I don't have any pictures of extraction. Um, which, but there were a lot. Of, let's put it this way: there were a lot of bloody, uh, 
bloody uh, dental towels after that station. So the next station, number four, is scrape off tartar. And, and that means scaling. They use those kind of electronic machines to, to destroy the tartar. Um, and here's, a, here's one of the dental nurses who's kind of saying, well, where are my patients? And, uh, and here they are, they're all lined up for it. So a lot of people went and got dental scaling. Um, Nita said that a lot of the people hadn't seen, been to see the dentist before, some of the children and other people, so they had terrible um, you know, uh, calcification inside their mouth. Um, and you know that's that's the sad thing is that if people don't have money, they can't afford to to go to the dentist, and and so people just don't get treated. So that's the great thing about a foundation like this. So there's Nita doing some um, some treatment, and um, they also gave out eyeglasses. So there was a separate station where you could get in line and um, and meet somebody, and they would give out eyeglasses. Now, the last time I went, February a year ago, they were using the machines and the eye charts and everything else. And here, I think they were just asking people to try on different kinds of glasses to see what kind of prescription fit them. So it was a little bit simpler um, procedure. Um, and then they also had uh, the medical station where they were treating people with traditional medicine and also um, non-traditional um, Thai medicine. and. Um, and then a pharmacy where they gave out medicine. So they gave out a lot of free medicine as well as free dental um, kits and everything else. And there's some of the, the medicine they were giving away. Um, these are the people behind the scenes that are doing all the, all the cleaning and, get, and preparing of everything. So you can see at this point we were up to uh, 190, so quite a few. There were a couple of EMS guys that were standing by in case anybody had an emergency crisis. And they eventually got in line and got their teeth checked too. Um, and then they had, a, they had a lunch for everybody, which was really nice. Um, and, you know, gave out soup. It was pretty busy. Here is the, here's the afternoon. You can see it's a big space, a lot of people working. Um, you can see the blue pipes there um, from the, for the water and, and suction and everything else. And um, <coughs> just going through the day. It was a long day. The people started coming in around 8.30 or so. And they were there right up until, so this is the afternoon, still a pretty good crowd there um, waiting for treatment. And a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of the, most of the kids would come with their uh, parents, so the parents would get a consultation with the, the dentist. Uh, I thought this was interesting. They had a huge, um, they had to change their gloves for every single patient when they were doing the initial screening, so the, the um, basket was completely filled with rubber gloves. Um, so the day went on. Um, you can't, it's a little bit hard to see, but this, this child was, had her legs crossed in kind of like a yoga position, so she was very calm. Um, they also gave out um, water and food to all of the uh, patients who came. So a lot of people not only got their teeth worked on they, or their eyeglasses, they also got a meal out of the day. Um, they all, at the end of the day, they were giving out um, glasses to, um, not the glasses you see with the uh, mugs for, um, for people to take away. And then the children also um, were given um, stuffed animals. And, uh, and you can see that even the monks were happy to get stuck with the animals. But that was kind of funny. And they're, they're carrying also some of the medicine that they got. Um, and these, and I, guess, I guess somebody was giving away ice cream too. <laughs> so, and they had to have coffee breaks also. Um, so by the end of the day, we're up to almost 600, um, 600 patients. Um, you know, everybody was really happy. Um, this is some of the dentures that were given out um, a year ago in February. I didn't see any, any work with dentures this time around, but they were actually doing adjustments right, right on the spot. So that's a normal thing. Um, they had a department of traditional and alternative medicine, and there they were um, consulting with patients and then um, giving out medicine and also um, there's a guy that got a, got a real lot of medicine, I guess and uh, even some monks got, got medicine, and they were doing treatment. This is one of the, the leaders of the, of the foundation, um, and he was getting um, a massage at the end of the day, and it's a little bit hard to see, but there was somebody getting acupuncture. Um, so they were also, and you know, also massage and heat treatments and things like that, so um, a lot of that. Now at the end of the day, um, at five o'clock, we started, they, it was amazing, in about an hour and a half, they went from that huge setup that you could see with all the equipment and all of the, um, 
and, and all of the pipes and everything else, they got the place completely cleared up. So all the dental chairs folded up and they go into these bags. Um, and then uh, you can see the, the dental stools there. These are the dental lights to get packed away carefully in boxes. Um, and all the equipment and everything goes back into boxes, goes back to Bangkok. And look, pretty quickly, those are all the dental gowns. Pretty quickly, everything gets broken down and uh, cables and you name it. And then pretty soon, um, even chairs get, um, have to get picked up and then packed away in a truck and brought back to Bangkok ready for the next, um, the next operation. And you know, after about an hour and a half, that's what the, uh, that's what the place looked like. Everything was cleared out. Um, and of course, at the end of the day, you had to count up all the, um, all the results of what everything was done. I think that was the highest number we got up to for dental patients, 620. Um, and this is a tabulation. Can everybody read, read what happened there? Uh, I can't. So anyway, they, they ended up with um, 450 alternative, alternative doctor visits, 250 doctor visits, gave away glasses to 600 people, and dentistry 624 cases. And they did 339 uh, cases of tartar scaling, um, and then dental fillings, 190, extraction, 133, um, sealant supplied, fluoride coating, give advice. So total services provided to 624 people, many children, but also many adults. Um, and then at the end, we, of course, we had the, the blessing and uh, merit with the, with the monks. And then, we, then the Rotary provided a very nice dinner with, uh, with, with uh, a, a big pot of food that had, I think, nine levels, including black chicken down on the bottom, uh, which is kind of strange. Um, but anyway, we had a very nice banquet and uh, ended up the day, day with that. And then, um, and then, of course, there was also um, karaoke. So you have to have some karaoke. Because if it's Thailand and it's a party, you've got to have karaoke. So um, we were at the January 2024 um, uh, operation up in, in, um, in Phong. And they're going to have another one in April in Renang province, which is down by Krabi. Um, they're going to, in August, they're going to be in Chai Nat province. I'm not, I'm not sure where Chai Nat province is. Where, where's Chai Nat province, Nita, do you know? To where? Nakhon Sawan, okay. And then um, in November, they're going to be in Prachin province. Um, and this is, um, there's a volunteer uh, page on their website um, about volunteering. You can donate and you can also join us. And just to give you an idea of what happens for in preparation for the April um, Renang operation in February, um, they're going to be, they'll go to Renang and they'll do a screening and inspection taking of the site and make sure that everything's um, ready for an, for the dental operation. March they go there on the 9th and they'll do um, they'll do work with people that are getting dentures. They'll go back again on March 30th and try um, to do a preliminary fitting of, of dentures. And then the end of April is the actual operation day and it's the delivery of the dentures. So there's a lot of work that goes into each one of these um, each one of these op operations as they call it. And, uh, and that's their website, so you can find their website. And, uh, and if you just do MDF in Google, uh, Thailand MDF, you'll, you'll get to their website. And you, you know, a lot of the information I took is off of there. But it's been, uh, I've been to two of them now. It's, uh, I, as I said, I don't speak Thai, but you know, I managed to, to help out and, and do what I can. And, uh, and you know, it's really kind of amazing to see so many people that give up their time. Many of the people are still younger who are still working actively. Some are retired like Nita, but people come from all over and they're all good friends. So it's, it's a lot of fun for everybody to see their friends and be involved in a worthwhile project. So are, are there any questions? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Very interesting. I have one question. How to become a dental uh, physician here in Thailand? What do you have to do? You have to study to dentistry, medical school, or how you become I, a dentist? Okay. The reason uh, why I'm asking yeah. is, if you go to certain parts of Thailand, you see two, three, or four dentists next to each other. Are they all qualified dentists? 
Okay, so um, I'll, I'll just tell you what I know about it, and I'm certainly no expert, but um, I know that in, uh, in hospitals, they have kind of three levels. They have dental assistants, they have dental nurses, which is extra training, and then they have um, dentists. And so the dentists, my understanding, they um, go through a regular program and then study another two or three years after a bachelor's degree. So I think about six years to become a dentist. So my wife's indicating six years. So six years to become a, a regular dentist. And of course, then there's lots of, I know um, Nita's son is a dentist, so, um, so there's a lot of extra training. They go on special courses to learn how to do, um, uh, to do uh, uh, implants and things like that. So any kind of extra treatment, there's extra training that goes through it. My uh, daughter-in-law back in the United States is a dentist, and she did four years um, undergraduate work in biology and then um, four years in dental school, and then she had to do another two years in a hospital um, as a resident. So, you know, altogether her, her um, secondary education has uh, been about 10 years. Um, to be a dental assistant, it's kind of on-the-job training, or you can go and do a course. To be a dental nurse, you have to go and study for one year or two years. To be a dental nurse, two years and four years, okay. So, so as a dental nurse, they learned how to do things like extractions and uh, impacted wisdom teeth and all that other sort of stuff. And that's done in hospitals, but it's not supposed to be done um, in, a, in a dental clinic. So you know, if you go to a dental clinic, um, you should be able to see a certificate that the person graduated from dental school. If there's nothing, if it's in a rural area, it very well could be somebody that has a lower level of training, but it doesn't mean that they can't do the job. To answer your question? I have another question? Yeah. I'm not an expert in the Thai uh, dental education system, so just I'm just telling you what I've gleaned from my observation. What filling material are they using in Thailand? In Europe, amalgam, which is a metallic composite, is not allowed anymore in a lot of countries. So what are they using in Thailand as a filling for tui? <laughs> I'm going to defer to my wife on that one because I have no idea. In Thailand, can use it all, all the time when broken. Uh, they can back, they can go back and do it again. Sorry, I can't. Uh, just to say that uh, my experience of the Thai dental system has been very good, and uh, the, all the fillings I've had are the latest uh, material, not the old amalgam. I've still got old amalgam fillings, but they go back 30 years or more. Um, but nowadays, they don't use that here. So that, that's my understanding too that they um, that they use more modern uh, filling, whatever that is. Any other questions, John? Uh, I notice that you've got a number on your. Uh, can you explain what that number is? What significance of that number? That's the number of times a day I smile. <laughs> now, so that that's interesting. I didn't know the answer to that question. I asked. I told. George asked me before, and I said, why don't you ask that during the presentation? And, um, and the Dental Foundation is 19 years old. This shirt was from when they were 16, and my wife has a 14. So it's just a matter of, um, this was from before um, COVID came around. But, um, and I guess, I don't know what they exactly did. Did they continue doing the visits during COVID, Nita? Did they do some of the work during the COVID year? Okay, they had projects, but I guess they didn't do all the, the mass meetings. I'm curious to, uh, to know what the requirement is in terms of, it's one thing to be trained, it's another thing to be licensed, and it's another thing to uh, have you know current education. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, maybe your wife is competent to answer that. Well, I, I think I can kind of answer that. I just know from my son-in-law, he's constantly getting, you know, he was trained as a dentist, and then he's constantly getting extra training. Um, I don't know exactly what happens in the United States or 
or other places with, with uh, dentists or doctors, but um, I know that he's constantly going for training on, on various techniques and things like that. I, I don't, yeah, well, I, my son-in-law is here in Thailand. It's need, need his son, he's a dentist, yeah. Yeah, excellent talk. Um, we used to have the same service in England, mobile dentary, uh, and then the government put a stop on it, uh, mainly because the cost of actually uh, supplying the dentist and all the equipment that went with it, and the wagon, massive wagon. How do you sort of fund all this? And the other question is, how do you differentiate between people who are desperately needed, like you're talking about the poor people, and people who are just going there for a freebie. Because I was watching your video, and somebody's sitting there waiting for treatment with a iPad or something. Yeah. Well, surely if they can afford an iPad, they can afford to go to a dentist. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't know, in, in my observation in Thailand, just about everybody can afford a, uh, a pretty good cell phone, but they might not have any money. Um, and so, um, and, and I think a lot of people prioritize that too. But I know that this foundation raises all of its own money. Uh, I know that my wife, every year on her birthday, she, rather than, uh, than get a present, she you know, de donates a few thousand baht to the um, foundation. All the people that worked that day were volunteers, so there was nobody that was getting paid that was there. And some of those people I know um, work in facilities and that sort of thing in Bangkok. Some of the people that, um, that you know, help with setting up and maintaining all the, all the equipment, as you can imagine, um, it's a lot of equipment to maintain. I was talking to one guy who could speak English pretty well, and he's a um, he's a retired engineer, but he uh, he he's involved with setting up and maintaining all the equipment. So to to keep you know 50 dental stations working um, is is quite a quite a feat. But everybody that came there that day um, volunteered their time. Um, the foundation does bring them um, there from. Um, Bangkok on a bus if you want, but we, we took an airplane, we paid for that ourselves and rented a car. Um, they did uh, provide a hotel for everybody for one night. So, and any, any other questions? Well, another round of applause for John and Nita. You come up, Nita, come on. Martini, Martini, come on. N Nita didn't want to stand up here because I told her I was going to let her answer all the questions. So, yeah, well, so as soon as I started, she ran away. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so uh, we have a very small uh, token of our appreciation. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have Nita's name on. That's okay. 